this very, very cool uh, card trick. There's two variations, which I will include the teachings for both in this video. Um, you could go ahead, you could use a borrowed deck. You got the spectators shuffle up the deck however they want. And let's say they were to pick this card from the middle. So they truly, freely get to pick whatever card they want. In this case, this is the card we're going to be using for the video. So that's going to be your guys' card. The spectator loses the card somewhere into uh, the middle of the deck. I was going to go over here and you just put it somewhere. And then essentially the way the rest of the trick works is you shuffle up the pack and you get the card just lost into the middle somewhere. And what you do is you tell the spectators that you're going to find the card, right? So all you have to do is take the deck like so. And let's say, let's say this. You go ahead and all you got to do, guys, is shake the deck. You tell your spectators, if we can just go ahead and shake this deck a little bit, your chosen card should come straight deep from somewhere into the middle of the deck. So that is one of the ways to do it in the tutorial. I'll show you guys another. All right, so here's how you guys are gonna be able to do this trick. And like I said before, I'll show you the second method right after. So let's say you go ahead, you can take the deck, you can have the spectator go ahead. They can shuffle it up, it can be a borrowed deck. Um, it really doesn't matter because it is going to be whatever card the spectator wants. Now, the very end effect basically just relies on you um, truly convincing the spectator that you are losing their card into the deck. So in this case, let's say you have the eight of spades. There's various methods. Um, bottom line is you just have to get their card back to the top of the deck. But the method I used in the video was I just dribbled the cards halfway down. And you don't have to tell the spectators to tell you when to stop or anything. You just kind of, you know, casually dribble. You say, all right, let's put your card back into the middle of the deck. You dribble it down. And what you do is you take their selected card and you leave it right where you stopped. And then what you do is you dribble one or two cards, maybe off center like this. And as you guys can see, now these cards are out jogged towards the back, um, just like that. So this way, let's say you dribble two cards or so, and then you can continue dribbling but you still have, like I said, this out jog, and all you have to do is pull up and push in. So you pull up, push in, and now just below this break, you have the spectator's chosen card and you put that to the top. So that was just the quick breakdown of that little control. If you wanna see it in real time, you can just go back to the performance and rewatch that to see how I did it, um, and then kind of figure it out for yourself. But it's, it's like I said, guys, it's very simple. Um, and then what you have to do is once you've controlled this card to the top, the next part is you can just do a couple ripple shuffles if you want, um, leaving their card obviously on top. So that way the card in your right hand is going to be the last card that you dribble. So that looks really, really good to the spectator. If you were to put the card in the middle, you bring it to the top and then you start shuffling the deck like this. The whole thing is you just need to convince to your spectator that the card is lost because the next part, obviously if the card's on top, then you know how the rest of this, this little effect goes. So essentially this is what you do. Um, you're going to hold the deck with your thumb at the left hand side um, and you can put your ring and your middle finger on the sides of the deck, or sorry, uh, your thumb, your ring, and your pinky are going to hold the deck like like this, so I'll kind of rearrange it so you guys can see. So you have your pointer and your your middle finger on the bottom part of the card, and you're kind of holding it in this claw grip. So if you guys look, look at it from the front, you have your index and your middle finger, and they're both contacting uh, this card, and you want to make sure you contact it from pretty much close to uh, the bottom. And all you're doing is, like I said guys, pinky, ring, thumb, and then two fingers at the back and they're just pushing that card up just like this. And you wanna make sure that these two fingers are at the bottom and you slowly just push up. And it's gonna be weird because your middle finger is longer than your index, so the card's gonna to wanna to come out like diagonal if you don't automatically um, change the, the way you're pushing the card up, but it's, it's pretty simple. Um, now, some tips for this are you kind of want to have the angle or the deck angle downwards. If you kind of have the deck like this and the spectators see that it's coming from the top, it might not look so great. So my tip to you is to angle the deck downwards so they cannot see the thickness of the, uh, of the top of the deck there because 
you have an angle downwards, it's almost like a Marlowe tilt kind of deal where you can you know, tilt it downwards and they're not going to see where it's coming out. The whole thing is you want them to think it's coming from the middle of the deck. So that's why, like I said before, it's so important when you, you know, do the entire trick that you're making the spectators believe that you've really lost it. So this way, you know, it's even that much more believable that the card is coming from the middle. So like I said, guys, and when you come to grab the card, make sure the deck is still angled downwards and you grab it. You can grab it with two hands. This way, the spectators don't see any of this because if they see some uh, bottom edges of the card peeking out, then they might be able to see that it's the, the very top card. But like I said, just make sure it's there. Boom, comes out. You grab it and you can shake it. Um, and the second method, like I said, is also very simple, um, but it's kind of like cheating. So yeah, in the second method, um, you would just have the deck cut out. Um, and this way, you know, it, it's pretty much the same thing. You control the card to the top and you just want to make sure the controlled card is the one that you're able to, you know, manipulate like this. And it does add a little bit of a, uh, of a difference there because obviously with the open deck, I mean, a spectator could theoretically think about, you know, you lifting the card up. But like I said before, it's all about how much you can misdirect them by making them believe the card's in the middle. Here you just push up on the card and the card just, you know, comes out of the deck. And it's, it's not, like I said, there, there's a little bit more to it because um, you do have to go and cut it out. But like I said before, I think that this method, the one without the box, works uh, just as great, if not better. So if you guys like the video, uh, you know, go ahead and like it. As always, thanks for watching.